Hello, today on my channel you will hear an amazing story about life. I hope you enjoy this story. This one struck me to the core. Honestly, I still can't forget it. Enjoy watching. Vanya, where are you? My daughter will be home any minute and I don't have anything ready yet, Angelica said, calling her husband to hurry him up. I'll be there in a few minutes. I'm still at the supermarket choosing a cake, answered Evan confused in front of the large assortment of goods. Take any of them and hurry up. Run home. I have to make dinner. Did Barbara call you yet? What time is she getting here? She said a couple of hours, but you know that's not certain and you have to prepare everything in advance. Don't worry. You'll be there in time. I'm already running to the checkout, Evan tried to calm the nervous wife. After talking to her husband, the woman realized that she still had some free time and, not to sit idle, went to her daughter's bedroom to clean and vacuum once again. Hearing the door slam, the woman hurried into the hallway. Finally, she said, and grabbed the bags from her husband's hands and hurried into the kitchen. Why are you so nervous? We're meeting a daughter, not some deputy. I'm not going to meet anyone else, and Barbara hasn't been home for a month. I want to please her with something tasty and homemade. She was actually at her best friend's parents' house. I don't think there's no home, cooked food in the country or any kind of food shortage. Oh, 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 you're making a lot of sense. These are her favorite dishes cooked with love, objected the mother, doing the cooking. A couple hours later, the doorbell rang and the mother, who had no time to chop the salad, pushed her husband to go and open the door for her daughter. Evan obediently carried out his wife's errand and, opening the door, saw the daughter in the company of a short, red-haired girl. Hello, daughter. Did you decide to come with guests? The father asked, greeting Barbara and her classmate Nancy, whom she had been staying with all this time. Hi, Daddy. Yes, I hope you don't mind. I didn't want Nancy to be bored alone in the dorm, so I invited her over for dinner. Knowing her mom, the table is already full, the daughter replied, hugging her father tightly around the neck. Hello, Evan, added the girl, standing behind Barbara, hiding behind a tall beauty with a bag on her shoulder. Hello to you too, Nancy. Come on in, Mom's just finishing cooking. You're right, daughter. The table's gonna crack if her friend doesn't help us, her father replied with a smile on his face, joking a little at his wife's thoughtfulness. While Evan returned to the kitchen to help his wife set the plates and cut the cake, the girls went to Barbara's bedroom to drop their bags. A few minutes later, they also went to the kitchen to sit with their parents at the same table. Hello, Angelica. It's so good to see you, Nancy said as she saw her hostess in the kitchen, torn between the stove and the table. Hello, Nancy. I'm sorry I didn't see you. Vanya bought everything at the last minute as usual. Now I have to tear myself apart to get everything done, replied Barbara's mother, making the last preparations for dinner. Don't worry, we are not in a hurry, answered her daughter, calming her mother down a bit. Would you rather tell us how you spent your vacation? Were you not bored in the village, asked the father. No, it was very interesting and fun. We went to the river every day went fishing several times with Nancy's father and even went to the forest for mushrooms, Barbara answered, telling about the most interesting events of the last month. What about the time we helped Daddy fix his car, Nancy added. Recalling their futile attempts to guess the right key her father needed at any given moment. Yes, but I remember most of all the boys from the neighboring village who tried to be nice to us and then ran across the field from your father chasing them with a shotgun, Barbara replied. Recalling another funny incident. Oh, that sounds interesting. Mother, should we go to the village? Evan asked humorously. Who liked the countryside? Aha. Uh -huh. And who will earn the money? The wife asked sharply, not realizing that her husband's question was an innocent joke. Oh, you again for your own. There is no romance in you, sadly replied the husband, realizing that in vain joked, you'd better tell me if everything was all right. Nothing bad happened, asked Angelica. No. Everything was fine. Just at that moment, Angelica was able to set the table, and the heated discussions about the vacation died down, instead of which they could only hear the clatter of spoons on plates. 
Several hours passed unnoticed over dinner and pleasant conversations. Realizing that she had to return to the dormitory early, Nancy looked at her watch and noticing that it was already the beginning of seven, began to fidget nervously. What's the matter? What's wrong? Barbara asked quietly, trying not to interrupt her parents, who were recalling funny stories from her childhood. I have to go to the dormitory, or there'll be trouble with the superintendent later, she said, showing the time. Mom, Dad, we have to go. I'm going to see Nancy off and meet Barry, so I'll be home by midnight, Barbara said, trying to leave the table. Thank you so much. Everything was delicious, Nancy added, thanking her friend's parents for the warm welcome. You're welcome. I hope you enjoyed everything, her mother replied to her. Until midnight, but no longer my mother and I have to work early, added Evan, who was still worried about his daughter. Even though she was about to turn 20 and was already in her third year at the University of Education. Okay, I'll try not to be late, Barbara answered, and hurried to her bedroom, pushing her friend to hurry her up a little. A few minutes later, the girls walked out into the hallway and, after saying goodbye to Barbara's parents, went outside. After a leisurely stroll through the city, the girls did not miss the opportunity to chat and so discreetly reached Nancy's dormitory. After arranging a meeting, they said goodbye, and Nancy went to her room. Meanwhile, Barbara realized that she still had a lot of free time and decided to use it to meet the man she loved and spend a few hours with him. Hi, sweetheart. How are you? Oh, Barba. Hi. I'm fine. I've been looking for a job, but another day wasted. How are you doing? Barry asked. I'm good, but that's not the big news. I'm in town, so if you want to meet up. Yay, finally. Of course I do. I'll meet you at our shop in half an hour, okay? Yes, agreed, answered the girl, and hanging up the phone, went to the usual meeting place where they had met a few years ago. Barbara had no sooner sat down on the bench than Barry appeared in her field of vision, running towards her with a beautiful bouquet of flowers. He hugged and kissed his beloved. The guy gave her the bouquet and, not to waste time, invited the girl to the movie theater. An hour and a half passed imperceptibly because the couple almost did not see the movie, having merged in a kiss from the first minutes to the beginning of the credits. Maybe we could sit in the cafe for a while. If you don't mind, Barry suggested, who didn't want to let the girl go for a minute. Yes, we could, but not for long. I promised my father that I'd be home by midnight, answered Barbara, for whom it was important to keep her promise. Well, I'll keep that in mind. Don't worry, I'll give you a ride so you won't be late. You got it. How's the search going? Are there any signs of improvement or is it still pretty bleak? No, uh, not so far. I thought that after graduation I would be a sought. After lawyer and I would be able to choose a position that I would find the most profitable and attractive. But in fact I turned out to be of no use to anyone. Some need a lot of experience. Others are too young. And others just offer. Not knowing what. But I want to work in my specialty. I understand, but don't feel bad. I'm sure everything will work out and you'll find a good job. I hope so, too, because I need the money. My father has invited me to his notary office several times. But you know what it's like to work with a relative. Moreover, I'd like to find something more interesting and not depend on my father. Well, it's up to you. I can't advise you, and I will support any decision you make, replied the girl, who sincerely wanted her boyfriend to be able to realize himself and find a decent job with a good salary. Thank you for your understanding and support. Better tell me how things are going with Nancy because we haven't called each other for over a week because of the bad connection in the village. I hope you haven't had any adventures, Barry asked, knowing most of the funny stories that had happened with the friends. No, the last week had been quite calm and measured. We've been helping Nancy's parents in the vegetable garden, so we've been humping the crops from morning until late afternoon. I see. I hope you didn't work too hard out there. Don't worry. It's fine. I enjoyed the work. I'd love to go back to my friend's place next year. If you want, you can join us. I'll definitely think about it, Barry said. And looking at his watch, noticed that it was already too late. Realizing that the girl should be back by midnight, the guy asked the waiter to bring the bill. 
and the couple hurried to the car. A few minutes before midnight, Barry brought Barbara home and, deciding to take advantage of the remaining time, kissed the girl once more so that the short parting would pass more quickly and unnoticeably. Walking up to the apartment, Barbara quietly made her way to her bedroom, only to notice her father peering out of the living room. He was not angry or dissatisfied, because his daughter, despite her adult age, had kept her word and listened to his request, which could not but please Evan. A few days later, Angelica returned home in a depressed state. Once in the apartment, the woman could hardly hold back her tears. Everything was literally falling out of her hands. Trying to distract herself from her problems, Angelica went to the kitchen and started eating. When she heard a noise in the kitchen, Barbara went there, as she didn't expect anyone to be back so early. Her parents usually arrived after six in the evening and her mother's early arrival was strange, to say the least. Oh, hi? Are you home already? Barbara asked in surprise. Yes, already home, answered the girl's mother sadly, trying not to cry. Did something happen to you? asked her daughter, realizing that the mother is not in the mood. No, I'm fine. Don't worry. Well, I can see that something is wrong. You can tell me, Barbara insisted, realizing that her mother was hiding something. I was fired from my job, and I don't know how to tell my father. Angelica confessed and started to cry. Calm down. Nothing terrible has happened. This is a family matter, and such problems should be solved together. So do not be afraid. I'm sure that Daddy will be able to advise something and will find a way out of the situation replied the daughter, trying to somehow support and cheer up her mother. I don't know. I'm not sure. But you do not doubt. Everything will be fine. Daddy loves you. So everything will understand. Especially you are not to blame for the fact that you were fired. Calm down and stop crying. I can't see you crying. Barbara continued to support her mom, hugging her tightly around the neck and pulling her close to her. Feeling such love and warmth, the woman was able to calm down a little and deciding to distract herself, concentrated on dinner to pamper her husband, who was soon to return from work. Determined not to leave her mother alone with her problems, Barbara joined her and helped prepare dinner for a delicate family conversation. Toward evening, her father returned home and, hearing a commotion in the kitchen, went there. Hi, sit down to dinner. We were just waiting for you, said the daughter, and hugging her father, sat him down at the table. The mother organized the dinner, and again her mood disappeared. She sat opposite her husband with a downcast look. What's wrong? Evan asked, turning to his daughter. I think it would be better if Mom told you everything, Barbara answered and stared at her plate without interrupting the conversation. I don't know how to say this. But I've been fired from my job, the woman said, struggling to hold back the tears that had risen like a lump in her throat. I'm sorry. It's a real shame. But don't feel bad about it. I'm sure you can find something, and for now and on my salary will survive, said the husband, said the husband supporting his wife and realizing how much she needs it at the moment. Realizing that she was superfluous here, Barbara went to her room so that her parents could talk quietly and be alone, discussing the near future and their plans. Evan reassured his beloved wife, promising to think of something because he had enough acquaintances and friends, so he had no doubt that he could find a temporary job for her. The next few days, the mother was still in a bad mood because, despite the large number of acquaintances, Evan could not find anything. Angelica continued to look for a job and even had a couple of interviews, but they didn't bring any results. Meanwhile, the summer was slowly coming to an end, and Barbara spent more and more time at her books, preparing for her studies in order not to let her parents down and justify their expectations. She was the first in the family who had a real chance for higher education, so the girl had to work hard in order to achieve the result. Realizing this, Barbara worked hard on herself and spent all her free time on books. Realizing that this would compensate for the lack of money and create hope for a prestigious job upon graduation, she decided to devote the next day of the summer 
to books and self-study. And suddenly, she heard a phone call. Hi, it's good to hear from you, said Barbara, answering Barry's call. Hi. How are you? Still sitting at the books, the guy asked. Yes. You know I'm only a few days away from school, so I need to study hard and be ready for the start of the new school year. I understand, but sometimes you need to rest. How would you feel about going to a club tonight to relax a little and have a bright farewell to summer vacation? I don't know. I don't really like nightclubs and try to avoid such places, answered the girl with a strict upbringing and no bad habits. I understand, but it's a really cool place and I'm sure you'll like it. It is one of the most prestigious and fashionable clubs in our city, so the crowd there is solid and quite decent. Come on. I know you love to dance, Barry said, realizing that he was using his last argument to change her mind. All right, let's go, but only for a while, Barbara answered, giving in to her boyfriend's persuasion. Great, I'll come to you closer to eight, Barry answered, and without distracting his favorite girl from the books, hung up the phone. The guy spent another half a day on several interviews to try to find a job in his specialty, but all attempts were unsuccessful. Some of them promised to call him back. Others openly refused the guy, considering him not experienced or promising enough. There were also those who openly hinted at the fact that the position should be paid for, but Barry did not want to ask his father for money, and he had no such savings, so he was forced to refuse the offer. Realizing that the day had passed and it was time to move out, the guy ran home and, having changed his clothes, went to Barbara to take her to a nightclub and at least a little time to spend in the company of his favorite girl. Having met, the young couple headed to the prestigious establishment. They entered and immediately went towards the loud music and dancing. Once inside, Barry and Barbara entertained, danced and partied until midnight, avoiding noisy companies and everything else. What do you think? I told you it was a good establishment, Barry said as he walked the girl home. Yeah, you were right. I really like this club and I've never been to a place like this before, Barbara agreed. What do you say we do it again sometime? I'd have to get a job first, but then we could come here every week. I'll think about it, but I'd probably be happy to dance again and have a little fun to take my mind off my studies. Great. It's a deal, Barry replied. He kissed the girl goodbye and let her go home. A couple days later, the new school year began. Waking up an hour earlier than the alarm clock, Barbara hurried into the shower and began to get ready for the university, so as not to be late for the university, so as not to be late for the first pair. The girl was so nervous and afraid, as if she had just entered yesterday, but she could understand because her parents had high hopes for her daughter's future diploma and repeatedly reminded her how important it was for her to graduate with honors. Every day remembering this, Barbara could not afford to relax or be late, so she came to the university half an hour before the start of the pair. The first class was quite productive, for Barbara managed to get an A in the second class. After answering a few questions on a new topic, they were quite simple for her because she had been preparing for a week and had read the material beforehand. So she got an A, uh, and the minimum plan for today was fulfilled. Let's go and have coffee. Nancy said to her friend, as soon as the bell rang for recess. Let's get ready for the next class, Barbara replied, grabbing her textbook again. Now, leave the book alone. It's not going to get away from you. We have free time, and it's meant for you to rest. Let's go to the cafeteria to sit, continued to insist on her friend. All right, all right. Let's go to the cafeteria, Barbara agreed, realizing that it was easier to accept her friend's proposal than to continue arguing and resisting, wasting time. How did you spend the last days of summer? I bet you spent all your time reading books, didn't you? You almost guessed it because I did, but Barry persuaded me to relax a little and we went to the Cosmos nightclub, Barbara answered, talking about her recent date with her boyfriend. Wow, Cosmos. That's a very cool place. I only dream about going there. She replied with a touch of envy. Well, if you want, we'd like to go there again sometime, and you could keep us company. Really? I'd love to, and maybe I could meet a nice guy there because I keep getting the wrong ones, Nancy said, thinking that there was a chance of meeting a nice young man in a place like this. 
I don't know, maybe I will. I don't pay much attention to guys. Well, obviously, you've got Barry. How's it going with him? Everything okay? Yeah, it's great. Every day, he just keeps surprising me and opening up to me, Barbara replied enthusiastically. A couple of years ago, she thought that their relationship had no future, and all these dates would last no more than a month. But soon, the girl fell in love and reciprocated the feelings of a guy showing attention to a freshman. Obsessed with studies and good grades, that's great. I hope I can find someone at Cosmos, Nancy replied, her mind on the nightclub she had heard about from friends and acquaintances. While Barbara continued to delve into her studies and earn her first grades, Barry continued to actively search for a job. Dozens of interviews and meetings did not bring results because no one is interested in an employee who a couple months ago graduated from the university. First, Barry believed in his success and had no doubts that he would be able to find a decent job. But with each day and the next rejection, Barry's faith in himself and his strength gradually faded. A couple of weeks in September, finally disappointed Barry and he, having lost all hope, decided to talk to his father. He didn't want to ask his parents for money, and he hadn't been able to find a decent job. So he decided to back up and discuss his possible employment at his father's notary office. Hi, can you give me a few minutes? Barry asked after waiting for his father to get home from work. Hi, are you here on business or just for fun? The man decided to clarify by asking a counter question. More like business, the son replied. Well, let's have dinner and then we'll talk in my office answered the tired Alexander, who wanted to eat and rest at least a little, leaving all the important conversations for later. At the same time, he couldn't ignore his son. So after dinner, he went straight to his office for a private conversation with Barry. Noticing that his father had gone to his room, the boy followed him, and knocking on the door, entered the study. May I? Yeah, come in. So what did you want to talk to me about? Remember a couple months ago when you offered me a job at your notary office? Oh, sure. I'll tell you something else. I remember exactly what you said. You told me that my office is a boring and uninteresting for you offer because you want more scope and not to sit in one place, quietly receiving a salary. Indignantly replied the father, remembering the past conversation with his son on the subject of his employment. I'm sorry I was so harsh then. I was wrong. Maybe I have a chance to become a part of your team, Barry asked modestly, realizing that his father was still angry with him for that conversation. Oh, I don't know. Do you need it? Yeah, I realized I was wrong, and I'm willing to work with you. I promise I'll listen and do whatever you tell me to do. I'm sorry, but I offered it to you a long time ago, and now the vacancy is not relevant, the father replied sharply, denying his son employment. Realizing that further conversation was futile, Barry went to his room in frustration, not noticing his mother eavesdropping on their conversation under the door. A few minutes later, Alexander returned to the kitchen to offer his wife a cup of tea and a little chat, resting after a hard day's work. Why are you doing that? Sabrina asked, looking intently into her husband's eyes. What are you talking about? The husband asked in surprise. I heard your conversation with Barry. Why did you turn him down? Because you shouldn't think that everything in life is easy and simple. I offered him my help, but he thought he was strong and independent. He tried to realize himself, and then he realized that no one in this world needs him. So he came back hoping for a warm place. You know that I achieved everything by myself. And if he doesn't know how to appreciate help in time, then let him do it on his own, Alexander replied explaining his position. Maybe you're right. I won't argue. But you realize that he's still very young. Barry has nowhere to get experience, and only you can help him. You don't have to treat him like a little kid and ask him like the rest of the staff, but help him gain experience. Maybe he will make a great lawyer push him in that direction, the wife replied, begging her husband to feel sorry for her son and help him. As a result of a lengthy dialogue, the man agreed with his wife and promised to talk to his son again, giving him a chance for self-realization. Wake up, I have good news for you, 
the father said loudly, walking into Barry's room early in the morning. What is it? What's wrong? Waking up, the boy started to ask, not understanding what he was talking about. You are hired. I expect you at my office at fourteen. Zero. If you are late even for a minute, you will be fired, Alexander answered, and without waiting for his son's answer, went to work. For a while, Barry lay there without moving, thinking over his father's words. Remembering yesterday's conversation, he couldn't believe it was true. In the kitchen, Barry met his mother and decided to ask her to clear the air. Sabrina told her son about their conversation and admitted that she had talked her father into changing his mind. Now everything was in Barry's hands, and only he was responsible for his employment and how long it would last. Overjoyed, the boy thanked his mother and promised to do everything in his power not to disappoint his father and not to set up his mother, who had persuaded her husband to change his decision, trying not to be late. Barry spent all his free time to find a decent suit and tidy it up, as well as to prepare a briefcase with legal documents and papers that he might need during his studies. Arriving at the office a few minutes before the time specified by his father, Barry made his way to the office. There he talked to Alexander, who finally accepted his son to work, but reminded him that here they were not relatives, but a superior and a subordinate, so the guy would not have privileges, moreover. He would have a more biased attitude to him because he was here by Blatt. Having heard all this, Barry had no questions or objections, as he realized that his father was absolutely right. Leaving the office of the chief, the guy got acquainted with a small team he found his workplace, began to settle in and started to fulfill the first small assignment from the chief. Hi, my good girl. How are you? How are you doing in school? Barry asked, calling Barbara at the end of the day. Hi. I'm fine. Just getting into the swing of things with Nancy. How are you doing? Any progress on the interviews or no luck so far? Barbara asked back, realizing how important this was to her boyfriend. You won't believe it, but I had my first day of work today, Barry replied, sharing the happy news with her. Oh, that's awesome. Congratulations to you. I told you you'd find something suitable. Yes, you did. But it's my father's office, so there's no reason to be happy. He said with a touch of sadness in his voice. Why not? I know you well, and I have no doubt that you will justify your father's trust. Take this job as a springboard for you to gain acceleration, to find something more interesting. I'm sure you'll be able to realize yourself and show what you're worth, Barbara replied, sincerely believing in the boy's success and supporting him. I hope you're right. By the way, remember what I said about us going to the nightclub again. I have my first advance in a couple weeks and we could celebrate that at Cosmos. That would be great. I'm looking forward to our trip to the club because you know very well that I really enjoyed it. Okay, so we'll do it again in a couple weeks. By the way, why don't we do it tonight? Let's do it tomorrow. I have a lot of things to do today. The girl said no, referring to homework and an essay that couldn't wait. Okay, so tomorrow I'll pick you up, Barry replied and having finished the call, went home. When he returned, he didn't want to cross paths with his father, as he had heard enough orders and errands during the day. The next day was even more difficult, so in the even more difficult. So in the evening, Barry had to call Barbara and refused to meet because he just wanted to rest and go to bed early. Closer to the weekend, the couple met and, after a walk in the park, went to the movie theater. As soon as the lights went out, Barry almost fell asleep, because the last few days had been quite difficult and stressful. Barbara took it with understanding because this is the first labor experience of the guy, especially his father is very picky about it because he wants the guy to become a real professional and easily find a better job in the future. Another week passes and Barry receives the promised bonus. Keeping his word, he immediately decided to call the girl to arrange a date for the next weekend. Hi, I hope I'm not interrupting you. No, I'm just on my way home. How are things going at work? Barbara asked. It's good, by the way. I got an advance so we can go to Cosmos this weekend. Are you in or do you have any plans? I'm all for it, but I had one small favor to ask of you. What's that? How would you feel about Nancy coming with us? She's alone in the dorms, and maybe she'll find someone at the club. I'm sure she'll have someone to meet and socialize with. Okay, that's fine with me. So I'll be at your place around 8 tomorrow. 
Barry asked, specifying the time and place of the meeting. Yes, eight o'clock would be fine. I'll be waiting for you, the girl replied, and having summarized the conversation, hung up the phone. Immediately, she called Nancy back and told her that tomorrow they were going to the nightclub she had been dreaming of for so long. Her friend was overjoyed, so her delight and screaming was heard not only on the other side of the phone, but also on the floor of the dormitory. The next day, Barry came to pick up Barbara, and then the couple stopped by the dorm to pick up Nancy. Upon arrival, the trio relaxed, entertained, and danced. Nancy didn't have any restrictions or prejudices, so nothing prevented her from having a few drinks. While the couple spent time in each other's arms, the girl got acquainted with a man, and at first he seemed to her quite interesting and pleasant conversationalist. Not a couple of minutes passed as the unfamiliar man began to spread his hands and behave inadequately. Noticing this, Barry stood up for his girlfriend's friend and almost started a fight. The security of the club saw this and quickly put an end to the conflict. Having learned from the girls about what happened, the guards threw the inadequate man out on the street as the reputation of Cosmos is more valuable than one drunken client. Jacob, the owner of the place, witnessed what was happening. A stately old man of medium height with gray hair and a small beard was intently watching the quarrel between Barry and the drunken man. Jacob did not interfere or adjust the situation, for he was not interested in that. The solid owner of the nightclub chain looked too elegant and well-groomed to be a party to the conflict, or to be reduced to the level of a guy demonstrating who had more testosterone. A seventy-year-old man, in an expensive suit with gold-rimmed glasses and blindingly shiny shoes, was just quietly watching from the sidelines. His gaze was cold and sharp, and to look into these piercing dark brown eyes were afraid not only young waitresses and dancers, but also guards who had been through the fighting. Watching people having fun in the club, the man as if evaluated them from above, but not only because he stood on the balcony of the second floor, but also because he was morally stronger, higher than all those present. The whole situation only distracted the old man from what really caught his eye. From the first minutes of Barbara's presence in the nightclub, he paid attention to a tall and slender brunette with perfect proportions and forms. The girl was charming, but despite her appearance, she was quite modest and reserved. At the same time, she could have easily graced the cover of any fashion magazine, and that kept Jacob on his toes. He bit his lip as he scrutinized Barbara's every curve, the thoughts and desires keeping him from focusing on anything else. He pulled himself together and stepped aside for a few moments, but only to pour himself a glass of whiskey and return to the balcony, continuing to watch the trio, especially Barbara. As he continued his observations, Jacob noticed that the girl didn't touch alcohol and didn't leave her boyfriend's side all evening. At the same time, he was impressed by the plasticity and grace of Barbara's movement. Unlike the other girls, she moved consciously, very beautiful and elegant which could drive anyone present crazy, regardless of his taste, the presence of a significant other and age. The old man so admired the girl that at some point unconsciously took out of his pocket phone and took a few pictures. He took a picture of the girl's face and, looking at it, went to his office. The next morning, Jacob arrived at the nightclub much earlier than usual, and once again closing himself in his office, continued to admire the photo of the young girl. He didn't notice that more than an hour had passed. During that time, he had time not only to consider every detail, but also to think up a cunning, terrible plan, which could only be realized by a truly vile and unscrupulous person. Richard, where are you now? Jacob asked, calling one of his men. Good morning, Chief. I'll be at the club soon, Richard replied. Good. As soon as you get there, grab Carlos and come up to my office. There's something to do. A few minutes later, two thugs knocked on the office door, who had arrived on the chief's orders. You wanted to see us? Carlos asked, afraid to raise his head to look the chief in his cold and cold eyes. Here is the girl. You need to find out as much information about her as possible by tonight, Jacob said, showing a picture of Barbara. Okay, I'll do that. One of the men obediently replied and pushed his partner out of the office, transferring the photo to his cell phone. In the evening... 
Carlos and Richard return to the nightclub in a good mood and with a smile on their faces because they have done their job and can please the chief with valuable information. Chief, everything is ready, Carlos said, and handed Jacob a flash drive where he had collected and prepared all the data he could find on the girl. Great, you can rest as usual. Everything is on the house, the old man said as he sent his subordinates away. Jacob opened the contents of the flash drive and began to study its contents, looking through the materials and records. Jacob learned that the girl's name was Barbara and that she would soon be twenty years old. She was in her third year at a teacher training university and had good grades. Her mother was recently fired from her job and is a housewife, and Barbara's father works as a repairman of household appliances. The subordinates also provided information about the girl's place of residence, as well as collected materials regarding her social circle, including her boyfriend Barry and best friend Nancy. Having thoroughly studied all the materials, Jacob went downstairs and, meeting his subordinates again, assigned a new task. Now you need to follow this girl for a couple of days to find out her way home, her habits, and the time of her movements. Report on her every move. All right, I will, the two thugs obediently replied, realizing that the chief was up to something bad. At the same time, none of the subordinates dared to say anything to Jacob, for he paid them well for their dirty work and had used them repeatedly to spy on young and beautiful girls. A couple of days after going to the nightclub, Barbara goes to her dormitory after class with Nancy. Having received one assignment for two, the girls decided to immediately begin its fulfillment in order to collect material in advance, make a plan of the essay, and develop its structure. The work turned out to be more complicated than originally expected, so Barbara stayed at her friend's house until dark. Meanwhile, Carlos and Richard, who have been following her since the morning, called Jacob to let him know where Barbara is. Oh, it's after 10. Zero. I'm sorry, but I have to go home. Can we finish the essay tomorrow? Barbara asked, realizing it was late enough and she had other homework to do. Yes, not a problem, answered her friend calmly, who was not against throwing her work away and having some rest. Great, then I'll see you tomorrow, Barbara replied. And after saying goodbye to her friend, she left, hurrying home. No sooner had the girl turned the corner of the dormitory than suddenly an inebriated man appeared on her way, obviously paying attention to her. Hello, girl. Let's get acquainted, said the unknown man on wobbly legs. I'm sorry, but I'm in a hurry, Barbara muttered quietly. Being very frightened, the girl tried to go around the man and even started to run, but he immediately caught up with her and started to grab her hands. Wait, where are you going? I haven't let you go yet, said the tall hooded man and started pulling the girl after him. Hey, what are you doing? Someone called the bully. The drunken man turned around and saw a poorly dressed old man in worn, out shoes, old jeans, holes in which were not for fashion but rather a consequence of their use, and a sweater with severely stretched sleeves. Get out of here, old man, or you won't be able to walk at all now, said the drunken hooligan, threatening the old man. I'm calling the police, he said in response, and pulling out a shabby cell phone, began to call somewhere. Okay, okay, you can't take a joke, the stranger replied, and letting go of the girl's hand, disappeared around the corner. Good evening. Are you all right? Asked the old man, approaching the girl for whom he decided to intercede. Hello, I guess so. Shyly answered the frightened Barbara and began to cry, realizing that... If it wasn't for this old man, nothing good would have happened to her. Calm down, child. It's all right. There are plenty of them here in the evening, but they are very cowardly. You only have to threaten them with the police. Thank you very much. You're a real hero. Come on. Everyone would have done the same thing in my place, the older man replied calmly. No. Such people are few. Others would have just passed by without saying a word to this bully. But you were not afraid and protected me. Still, you're welcome. My name is Jacob, by the way. My name is Barbara. Thank you again. I think I'll be going now, the girl said, saying goodbye to the old man. No, no, I'm not letting you go anywhere alone. 
After what happened, I have to take you home. It's not necessary. It's inconvenient. And I don't want to take up your time, Barbara said, trying to politely refuse the old man's offer. I have to insist on walking you home. I'm responsible for you now, and I just have to make sure you get home safely, so I'll hand you over to your parents. Trust me, I'll feel better that way, because I'll know you're safe, Jacob replied, insisting. Okay, fine. I guess you're right, and it will be better this way, she agreed, who had just gotten over the shock and had calmed down a little. Hearing the doorbell, Angelica hurried into the hallway and opening the door, was extremely surprised. In front of the woman stood her daughter, next to whom was some unknown old man. Good evening. Don't be frightened. I was just walking your daughter home so she wouldn't get into any more trouble, answered the old man, calming the worried woman. Hello. What story? the mother asked. Mom, it wasn't a big deal. Jacob was there at the right time. So it was all right, Barbara replied, also reassuring her mother. Come inside for some tea, Angelica said, inviting the old man into the apartment. I'm not sure it's convenient, the gray-haired man replied modestly, shuffling from foot to foot. Don't say no because you've seen me off and deserve a cup of hot tea, Barbara added, to persuade her grandfather to accept her mother's offer. Okay, you got it replied the old man with a slight smile on his face and entered the apartment. Once in the kitchen, the mother put the kettle on, and while they had a few minutes, decided to talk to her daughter and the old man who had escorted her in to find out about how they had met. So what happened? Can you tell me in more detail? There's not much to tell. I was accosted by a bully outside Nancy's dormitory who started grabbing my arms, and Jacob scared him off by threatening the police. Barbara replied, telling of the old man's heroic act. You did a great job, thank you very much, the mother commented, addressing the humble and poor old man. There is nothing to thank me for. I just happened to be there and could not pass by, calmly replied the gray-haired man, who seemed very shy and reserved in his emotions. At this moment, the head of the household returns home from the workshop, hearing an unfamiliar male voice in the kitchen. The man immediately went there and met a gray-haired old man chatting sweetly with his wife and daughter. Good evening. Excuse me, who are you? Evan asked an angry and disgruntled Evan. Hello? My name is Jacob, the guest replied politely. What are you doing here? The head of the family continued his mini-interrogation, trying to find out where the uninvited guest had come from. Vanya, quiet. Sit down. I'll tell you everything now, said Angelica, intervening in the dialogue. All right, I'm waiting, replied her husband. Jacob saved our daughter from the bully and, like a true gentleman, walked her home so that nothing would happen to Barbara. Is this true? The man asked, looking at his daughter. Yes, Barbara replied, nodding, confirming her mother's words. Thank you so much for helping our only and beloved daughter. You'll forgive me for starting with the questions. I just love my family very much, and I'm afraid of losing them. I hope you won't be mad at me for that, Evan replied, apologizing to the old man. It's okay. I understand perfectly, the gray-haired man replied with a kind smile. Thank you again for your help. Now you are our favorite and always welcome guest, so we will be glad to see you at home. Come by as you have time and desire, added the head of the family, unable to find the words to express his sincere gratitude to the old man who protected his daughter. Thank you for your warm welcome. You are very nice, easy and pleasant. You are a wonderful family. I promise that I will visit you and I hope I will remain a welcome guest. Jacob replied and left for his home, saying goodbye. Barbara, can I talk to you for a minute? Evan called out to his daughter as soon as the old man had left. Yes, Dad, did you want something? From now on, I ask, or no, I insist that you never come home late alone. My mother and I are not in our twenties, and I don't want to worry too much, because it's not healthy. If someone can take you out, you can stay out late. If not, you can stay out late. If not, you can go straight home. Do you understand me? My father said in a commanding tone. Yes, well... 
I understand you. Barbara answered, realizing that her parents were too much worried about her and despite her age, still treated her like a child. A week later, Barbara's father took the weekend off to see the old man. When he was free, Evan called Jacob and invited the man to go fishing. At first, the old man refused, citing that he had other plans, but then he had other plans. But then he abruptly changed his mind and accepted Barbara's father's invitation. The next day, Evan meets the old man, and they go to the countryside to fish and relax a little. In the process, the men continue to socialize and get to know each other even closer. Realizing that this is a great way to gain trust, the creepy old man decides to pretend to be a family friend to take advantage of Barbara and starts telling her about his sad personal life story. You know, I used to have a family, a wonderful wife and a loving daughter, Jacob began. And then what happened? I'm sorry if I'm getting personal. No, it was fine. Then my wife met another wealthier man and decided she wasn't interested in me anymore. She took the girl and moved to another country. Since then, I'm very lonely and terribly long for my daughter, as I have no opportunity to communicate with her. I sympathize. I understand how hard it is, and I dread to imagine what you have been through. Barbara is the most important thing in my life, and I can't imagine her without my daughter, Evan replied, supporting the sad old man, who could hardly hold back his tears. That's why I helped your daughter. I know that, for someone, she is the closest, dearest, and favorite person," answered the old man, continuing to gain the girl's father's trust. After a little more fishing, the men pack up their fishing rods and leave. Upon returning home, Evan realizes that he has a good catch. But it wouldn't have been without the old man. He offers to split the catch in half, but Jacob refuses on principle, as he doesn't need much on his own. Realizing that this is wrong, the head of the Kolodov family decided to invite the old man to his house. If you don't want to take fish, come to us tomorrow for soup. Under it, we'll open a bottle of white wine and everything will go like butter. Oh, that's a good story. All right, I'll come tomorrow, the old man said, agreeing to Evan's suggestion. Hurriedly saying goodbye to Barbara's father, the gray-haired man hurriedly left. The old man walked a few blocks to avoid drawing attention to himself and exposing his years of rehearsed image, realizing that he was a safe distance from the house and unlikely to be noticed by anyone in the Kolodov family, Jacob stopped a cab and headed for his home. When he arrived, the old man showered, changed into his dress clothes, and left for the nightclub in his private car, parked in the driveway. The next morning, Barbara woke up and immediately after breakfast, went to her room to call Barry and make an appointment. She hadn't seen the guy in a few days, constantly missing him at work, and really missed him. After calling, the couple agreed on a time and place to meet. Deciding that she wanted to meet her friend before the date, Barbara got ready to go to Nancy's dorm and headed for the apartment exit. On the threshold, she was met by her father, who was extremely surprised that the girl was going somewhere at such an early hour. Where are you going? It's a day off, Evan said. Yeah, but I have a lot of plans. I have to meet Nancy first, and then I've arranged for Barry to meet me for a little while. No, no, I was going to ask you not to go anywhere today because Jacob is coming to visit us at lunchtime. But I've already made arrangements with Barry. How do you envision that? Barbara asked, a little angry, trying to contradict her father. It's all right. Invite him home, too. My mother and I are good to him so we'll sit together as a family and talk. She said in a calm tone, thinking that it would be a compromise. Barbara wanted to argue with her father again, but she realized that there was no point because he would continue to insist, a little angry. She threw her, shoes on the doorstep, and went to her bedroom. Collapsing into bed, Barbara called Barry to talk and make adjustments to their plans. Hi again. I'm sorry, but we can't make it to the park. Hey, why? Is something wrong? Yes and no. My dad invited a guest to the house and he wants me to be there. I see, when are we going to meet? Barry asked in a sad voice, realizing the meeting was in jeopardy. Today I talked to my father and he doesn't mind you coming to visit us. Do you think it would be convenient? Why wouldn't it be? 
You've known your parents for a long time and we've been dating for a while, so it's fine. Besides, it would be interesting for you to get acquainted with our guest, Barbara answered, hoping that the boy would agree and would not make her bored in the company of the old man and his ancestors. Well, if you think so, that's fine. What time should we arrive? Closer to two, Barbara replied, setting a new time and place for the meeting. In a hurry, Evan helped his wife in the kitchen. Keeping her away from the fish, he began to prepare soup, according to the old recipe, which he had inherited from his father and his grandfather. The aromatic soup, the smell of which did not leave indifferent, was so delicious that it was difficult to restrain oneself from biting the spoon while tasting it. Realizing that everything had gone according to plan, even hurried to his bedroom to change for his guests. Jacob was the first to arrive at the door, a little earlier than agreed. Barry was less punctual and was a little late because he had to talk to his father about their notary business. Meet Jacob, a wonderful man and a true friend of the family, Barbara said, introducing the old man to Barry. Hello, my name is Barry. Nice to meet you, the boy replied, shaking hands with the gray-haired man. Likewise. I must say that Barbara has excellent taste, replied the good-natured old man, appreciating the girl's bow. Thank you. It's my pleasure, the girl replied, taking it as a compliment. Having sat down at the dining table, the family began tasting the dishes, waiting for Evan's crowning ear. The golden boil and delicate fish flavor were maddening. But the taste exceeded even the highest expectations. Oh, wow. I didn't think that river fish could make such a delicious soup. The old man reacted in surprise, realizing that they were not catching salmon and trout. But simple fish, the secret is in the spices. Evan confessed with a satisfied expression but did not reveal the secret of the family recipe. Shall we have a drink? Mom asked, offering some banjalika for this soup. You know I'm all for it. I suggest that our guardian angel and savior of our beloved daughter Toast, the head of the Kolodov family replied, turning to Jacob. What do you mean, savior? Barry asked in surprise, as he didn't know the story of the attack because Barbara had decided to keep it from him. Yes, that's right. Don't you know? Barbara had been coming home from Nancy's late at night the other day and had been accosted by a bully. Jacob defended Barbara and threatened the police to chase her away. Jacob told her mother excitedly, telling the story of their acquaintance. You're a real good boy. You didn't get scared, and that gives you a lot of respect, Barry commented, thanking the old man. At the same time, Jacob didn't like him at first. There was something about him that both alarmed and repulsed him at the same time. But Barry couldn't figure out what it was. The old man seemed suspicious, and even his looks and demeanor made Barry wonder if he really was a good, kind, and sweet old man. Jacob's gaze was cold and lifeless, and his smile didn't seem sincere or snide, as if he were plotting something, not looking at the interior, but looking around and scrutinizing the details. Barry could not talk about his suspicions because they were not supported by anything, and hardly anyone was interested in listening to his thoughts and assumptions. Without telling anyone about his opinion and keeping it to himself, Barry continued to watch the old man closely, repeatedly noticing the unnaturalness of his behavior. Thank you for a wonderful dinner. It was nice to meet you and talk to you, Barry said as he said goodbye to his parents and Jacob. You're welcome. Come again, Barbara's mother said. Yes, it's always a pleasure to see you, his father added. It's nice to meet you too, and I'm sure we'll see each other again. The old man said in an unkind way that made him a little wary of Jacob's fake smile. Would you walk me out? Barry asked, turning to Barbara to pull her away from the dinner table and talk to her one on one. Yes, of course, the girl replied, and after apologizing to those present, walked out of the kitchen to see the guy off. Barry insisted that Barbara come out of the entryway with him, as he had a conversation that neither Jacob nor the girl's parents should hear. Please tell me more about how you met this old man. Jealous? He's old, Barbara decided to joke. I'm serious. How did you meet him? There's no details. I left the hostel, 
and as soon as I rounded the corner I was accosted by a drunken man who looked more like an orangutan. I was frightened and wanted to run away, but he started grabbing my arms. Suddenly my grandfather appeared and called out to the man. He ignored Jacob, but when he heard that he would call the police, he hurriedly ran away. Hum, this is weird. A young, healthy, and slightly drunk man scared of some old guy. It's suspicious, said Barry who was getting more and more confused. What are you saying? The girl who hadn't heard the last words of the guy asked again. I wanted to ask you to be more careful with that old man. Who knows what he has in mind? I don't trust him much. Oh, you're suspicious by nature, and you don't trust anyone. But you should, because the old man is very kind, sweet, and sympathetic, answered Barbara, who thinks that her boyfriend is worried for nothing. Still... Don't be too naive, I beg you, once again asked Barry, who thinks the old man is extremely strange. Okay, I'll be considerate, Barbara agreed, realizing it was easier than continuing to argue. Continuing to study hard at the university, the girl didn't notice how day after day passed. A couple of weeks later, coming back from her studies, Barbara decided to go to the supermarket to buy groceries according to the list her mother had left her in the morning. After choosing everything she needed, she went to the checkout and for a moment looked at the shelves with expensive sausages. At that moment, she accidentally bumped into someone and before she could turn around, she heard a familiar voice. Hello, Barbara. Is that you? Oh, hello, Jacob. I'm sorry I didn't see you, the girl replied, not noticing the old man. That's all right. Things happen. I take it money is tight, the old man asked glancing at the basket and seeing a modest selection of inexpensive groceries. Well, it is, Barbara replied, embarrassed, seeing the gray-haired man's gaze on her purchases. Is there anything I can do to help? I don't think so. I hope it's just a temporary hardship. It's just that my mother was laid off not long ago. I'm a student and can't find a good job, and my father is working. But his salary isn't quite enough, so we can't afford too much. I understand but I'd really like to help you out. I'll be waiting for you at the supermarket exit, and I have something to offer you, Jacob said, and went to the cash register to pay for his purchases. Barbara froze for a few moments, not realizing what the humble and unhappy old man had to offer her, and then hurried after him. What did you have to offer me? Barbara asked when she met Jacob outside the supermarket. I have a friend who might be able to offer you a good part-time job. Oh, I don't think that would be possible. I don't know much about anything, and I can't spend much time working because of my studies. The only thing I'm good at is dancing because I've been in a dance class for more than five years, but I don't think anyone would pay me for it, Barbara said sadly. I'm sure he'll think of something so such skills can come in handy, the old man replied with a smile on his face. Well, I'll be grateful for any help, the girl replied gratefully realizing that her mother was waiting for her with the shopping, hurried home. Several days passed after the conversation with the old man. Barbara had been so focused on her studies that she had forgotten about the conversation and Jacob's desire to help her solve her financial difficulties. As Barbara and Nancy walked out of the university after the end of the last class, she noticed an old man standing nearby. Surprised Barbara, without saying anything to her friend, goes to him and drags her behind him. Nancy was extremely surprised that her friend knew this gray-haired man who looked like an intelligent bum in shabby clothes. Hello, how are you? Barbara asked, not expecting to see Jacob near the university. Hello, Barbara. I just happened to be passing by when I saw you. I thought you were following me, she said jokingly. No, I didn't know you were a student here, Jacob said, frightened, denying Barbara's assumption and not realizing that it was an innocent joke. I know, don't worry about it. Who's that? Nancy asked, taking on her friend's sleeve. Oh, I forgot to introduce you. This is Nancy, my best friend, and this is Jacob, a wonderful man and a real hero who saved me from the bully outside your dormitory. Nice to meet you, Nancy said, turning to the old man. Nice to meet you too. You're a very nice girl, Jacob replied, kissing the girl's hand. Thank you. It's my pleasure, Barbara's friend replied, embarrassed. Now that I'm here, 
I have some good news for you. I was talking to a friend of mine, and as luck would have it, he's recruiting dancers for his nightclub. He's the manager there. I talked to him, and he's interested in new talent. It's not hard work, just a couple hours a day, so it won't interfere with your studies. Yeah, I understand that, but I guess I'm going to have to pass because nightclub work isn't really my thing. What kind of club does your friend work at as a nightclub manager? It looked like a planet or something, but no. Cosmos, Jacob answered. Wow, that's cool. Come on, it's easy money. And besides, you'll be working in one of the best clubs in town, which is every girl's dream, Nancy commented excitedly, trying to change her friend's mind. I don't know. It's kind of unseemly. What will Barry and the parents say about it? Barbara began to wonder. Who's asking you to tell them about it? You'll make the first money, then maybe you'll confess. But you shouldn't say anything before the time. Nancy replied, continuing to persuade her friend to at least try to get a job in a nightclub. Okay, I agree, Barbara replied, realizing that the family's financial situation was really bad. Great, here's the receptionist card. Tell him that you're from me, Jacob said, and gave her the card and went about his business. If you call, put in a good word for me, too. In case they need me, Nancy said. Dreaming of working in a prestigious nightclub. Wait a minute. I haven't even been invited yet. And you want to follow me, Barbara replied, realizing that the chance of getting into such an establishment was minimal. So what? Ask anyway. You don't know how to dance and you've never done it professionally. I don't know if there is a chance, replied her friend sadly who was ready to dance or scrub floors if only to work at Cosmos. Okay, I'll ask. Barbara replied, realizing that it was easier to agree with her friend than to continue arguing. After a little more talking, the girl led Nancy to the dormitory and returning home, decided to call the administrator to make an appointment. Good afternoon. My name is Barbara. I was told that you are looking for girls who can dance well. Hello, I'm Victor the manager of Cosmos Nightclub. Yes, we really need another girl for the dance team. How did you hear about this vacancy? The man asked. Victor gave me your number and said that you would help me with employment. Victor? Yes. In that case, I can really help you, replied the administrator, sharply changing his tone towards the girl to a softer and kinder one. Great. Can I come to the interview? Yes, I'll expect you around lunchtime tomorrow. We'll need to see how you move, and if everything is good, the last vacancy will be yours. Victor replied, Okay, thank you. I'll be there tomorrow, Barbara replied, and hanging up the phone. Went home happily, realizing that she had every chance to seize the opportunity and get a prestigious part-time job with a high salary. The next day, Barbara, at the end of classes, immediately went to Cosmos where she met the administrator and got acquainted with him personally. Having discussed all the details, the girl changed into a lighter and more athletic outfit to dance a trial dance and demonstrate her professional skill. As a result of the casting, Barbara got a job in the club, becoming part of a small dance group of five girls. Returning home, the girl could not contain her joy and, deciding to share this event with someone, decided to call her friend. Hi. I was at the casting in Cosmos, Barbara said discreetly, trying not to reveal the positive outcome before time. Hi, how was it? You didn't sound like you got the job, did you? Nancy asked. Well, I didn't. I got a job and I'm going on the dance program tomorrow, Barbara said, barely restraining herself from shouting in delight. Wow, that's great. Congratulations, now my friend will be dancing at the coolest club in town. I hope there are discounts for friends of female employees. I don't know. It's too early to ask. I have a favor to ask of you. I don't want you to tell anyone about my job. My parents won't be happy, and Barry won't be happy. If anyone asks where I'm going or why I'm away at night, you'll have to say that we're doing research and preparing an interesting project like a term paper, okay? Yeah, no problem, I'll cover for you, Nancy replied, realizing that Barbara was afraid of a scandal with her boyfriend and parents. The next day, Barbara could hardly wait until the end of classes, realizing that today was her first day of work. 
Hearing the call, the girl packed her things in a few seconds and, reminding her friend about their joint legend, ran to the nightclub. Having met with the administrator, the girl first saw the room for the dance group, where there were already other beauties, picked up as well as Barbara just a couple of days. Having changed clothes, the girl studied the program and, preparing for the evening, began to rehearse a joint dance. It turned out to be quite simple and banal, so a few hours were enough for the dancers to achieve minimal coherence. When they were on stage for the first time, they were not afraid of the audience and demonstrated their talent, eliciting cheers and applause from the people in the audience. Jacob was also watching, carefully observing Barbara's efforts. A month passed and Barbara received her first paycheck. It was quite a lot of money, which pleased her because she realized that she would be able to help her parents and would no longer have to ask them for money for small expenses. Deciding to relax and rest a little, Barbara called her friend and invited her to a cafe to drink coffee and talk, as well as to discuss her successes in the nightclub. Once at the cafe, the girl booked a table and waited for her friend. Hi, have you been waiting long? Nancy asked, coming up a few minutes after Barbara. Hi, no, I just made a reservation. How are you doing? I'm doing okay, but I don't think that's going to be interesting. Why don't you tell me how you're doing at Cosmos? I'm doing great. I got my first paycheck today. I was told that the salary will be good, but I did not expect that the amount will be so nice. Now, I'll be able to help my parents and I won't have to sit on their neck. Barbara said happily, opening her purse and showing her friend a lot of money by their standards. Wow, that's cool. It's a pity that they only needed one employee. I would have liked that kind of money too said her friend with a touch of envy, still living at the expense of her humble parents from the village. I'm shocked myself. A couple of months ago, I could not have believed that I would find such a job. The pay is good and the atmosphere is great. It's so beautiful and fun and funky but decent that I wonder how I could have been so lucky, Barbara replied, happy for the chance. After a little more coffee, the friends discussed their studies and then went home. When Barbara returned home, she met her parents and an old man who had come to visit them. Lately, he often spent time at their house and constantly communicated with the girl's father, who had become a true friend, able to listen and give advice. Deciding not to interfere with the communication between her parents and the guest, the girl went to her room and went about her business. A couple of hours later, she realized that she had to go to the club. She changed her clothes and went out into the hallway. Where are you going? her mother asked, noticing that it was getting quite late. I'm going to a friend's. We have to do some coursework, Barbara answered, supporting the legend she had invented earlier. Maybe you need to get some rest at least. You've been working late on it almost every day. I do, but a little later. You realize I have to study hard and I don't want to let you and my father down, the girl replied as she continued to pack. Okay, but don't be too late, Angelica replied and hugged her daughter. As soon as the girl left, the old man hesitated, as if he remembered something abruptly. What happened? Evan asked the old man. Yes, I remembered that I had to be home, because I had guests coming. I'm sorry I didn't mention it sooner. It slipped my mind, Jacob replied. It's all right. It happens. Barbara's father responded calmly, and realizing that the guest had to leave, he walked him out. The old man hurriedly said goodbye and left the apartment, followed by the girl. Barbara, wait a minute, Jacob called out to the girl, walking a little ahead of her. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't notice you at all, Barbara said, turning around and seeing the old man in front of her. It's okay, it happens. How do you like your new workplace? Everything is satisfactory, no complaints, the gray-haired man asked. No, no, not at all. I am very grateful for your help. Just yesterday I got my paycheck, so money will be easier and I won't have to ask my parents for money and more. Now I'll be able to buy groceries at home and provide groceries at home and provide for myself so I can make my father and mother happy. That's good. I'm very happy for you. Well, I'll go. I'll see you later, the old man said. And after saying goodbye to the girl, he left in the other direction. Looking at the clock again, Barbara realized 
that she was already a little late and hurried to the club, as she didn't want the administrator to get angry, scold her, or apply penalties. Hi. Where have you been so long? The administrator already came in and asked why you are still not there, said one of the dancers, seeing Barbara on the doorstep of their dressing room. Hi. A little late. I hope he wasn't too mad. No, not yet. Let's hurry. Victor said to meet you in his office as soon as you get here. Said he had some very important and very good news for all of us. Hello, may I come in? Barbara asked, knocking on the receptionist's office. Yes, come in. Have a seat. As I told the other girls, I have good news for you. At last night's party, we had guests from a club in the capital, and they were very pleased with your performance. In the course of long discussions, they convinced us to let you go to the capital for a few days to dance in their club. I realize that the offer is unexpected, but for just a couple of days, you will get a month's salary, and I'm sure it's a good incentive. In addition, the club will pay for hotel accommodation, food, and travel, and all you need to do is provide documentation. Oh, that's cool, I'm in. One of the dancers responded, There's more to it than that. I realize that such a trip is a difficult and exhausting process, so I will ask you to be ready for tomorrow. Also, you will need to give me the documents, as I will deal with organizational issues and settle all the details. Any questions, suggestions? The administrator asked, summarizing his speech. No questions. Everything is clear. Almost in one voice answered the girls. Realizing that this dialogue is over, the beauties went to their dressing room and changed clothes, preparing to go on stage. In the evening after work, Barbara returned home and on the way thought about how to tell her parents that she would be out of town for a few days. Realizing that the trip would fall on a weekend, Barbara decided to deceive her father and mother by telling them that she would be with Nancy. Upon returning home, the girl locked herself in her room and worked out the details of the plan so her parents wouldn't be able to expose her deception. Barbara, are you coming to dinner? Her mother called her as she set the table. Yes, yes. Just a moment, Barbara replied and hurried into the kitchen. Picking at her plate, the girl didn't know where to start, afraid that her parents would guess that she was lying to them. What's wrong? Are you in a bad mood? The father asked, noticing the change in his daughter's behavior. No, I'm fine. I was just thinking about the fact that I have to go tomorrow. Where to? Evan asked in surprise. Didn't I tell you? Nancy invited me to stay with her and I said yes because I missed her village. Besides, we'd promised to help her parents with some chores. They're doing some renovations and could do with a couple of hands. I hope you don't mind. No, helping a friend is a good thing, so we don't mind. The mother replied, keeping the family conversation going, realizing that the plan had worked and her parents believed her. The girl went back to her room after dinner and called her friend to tell her what she was up to. Nancy didn't like Barbara's idea, for she didn't want her to use her name in such a deception. At the same time, her best friend simply had to support any decision Barbara made, so she agreed to cover for her in case the girl's parents called her. Just as Barbara hung up, the phone rang. Hi. How are you? Are you and Nancy doing coursework again or what? asked Barry who had rarely seen the girl lately because of her constant busyness. Hey. Oh, everything's fine. No, I'm not busy today. I'm just relaxing at home. Oh, that's great. What are your plans for tomorrow? Maybe we can meet up for a little walk or a movie? I don't think so. Why not? The boy asked bitterly, realizing he was in for another rejection. I promised Nancy we'd go to her village tomorrow. Her parents are doing some redecorating and I have to help them. I hope you understand. Yes, I understand, but I've missed you so much. I don't have a lot of free time with this job and I can't wait to see you. I'm sure we'll find time to meet on Monday, Barbara replied, realizing that she was very busy this weekend. Oh, I really hope so too. By the way, how are things going at work for you? Is your father still pestering you about little things or not? He's been treating me the same as the rest of the team lately, which is starting to make me happy. There's no more nagging, so I'm starting to like this job. That's great. 
I hope you can get your first experience, and soon you'll find the job you've been dreaming of for a long time. Barbara supported him, not doubting that he would get his way. The next day, Barbara packed her suitcase from the very morning, and having said goodbye to her parents, went to the nightclub. Having met with the administrator, the girl gives her passport to Victor, and he escorts her to the room to the other dancers, informing her that the first month of dancing in the club was a preparatory stage, which they passed with honors. Moreover, the nightclub owner himself wants to welcome the girls and thank them for their excellent work. Realizing that now they would meet their employer, the girls froze in anticipation. The administrator left, and a few minutes later a respectable man in an expensive suit appeared on the doorstep. As soon as the door opened and Barbara saw the owner, she was at a loss for words. Behind the glitter of gold jewelry, the girl recognized Jacob and the chick, an expensively dressed man. Hello, lovely ladies. My name is Jacob, the owner of this nightclub, the old man said, not paying much attention to Barbara. Hello. All the girls answered in unison except Barbara, who was still unable to say a word because of the shock and surprise she had experienced. I would like to inform you that you will continue to dance, but from now on you will move to a new level of work. Now you are not just a dance group in the nightclub, but beautiful dancers who will be entrusted with VIP orders for the elite clients of the club. What does it mean? Asked the boldest of the girls, not understanding what it means. From now on you will perform private dances. Immediately stipulate that your salary will increase in times respectively and the requirements will increase. What do you mean? What other requirements? Asked the same dancer. The receptionist will explain all the details, Jacob said calmly, and left the room. When she realized that the old man had pretended to be a friend of the family and trusted her parents in order to take advantage of her, Barbara tried to run after him, but the door slammed in her face. She grabbed the handle and yanked the door open, but heard someone lock it from the outside. Taking out her phone, Barbara tried to call Barry. But a couple of moments later, she realized that there was no reception in this death room. The excited dancers also started calling friends and relatives. But all attempts were futile. The girls started to panic and tried to scream to call for help, but realized that this would not yield any results and realized that there was nothing left for them to do but wait for the receptionist. Hello again, dear ladies, said Victor, appearing in the room a few minutes later. What's going on? I will complain. One of the girls started to complain, hoping that it would scare the administrator of the nightclub. Don't interrupt and listen attentively. The administrator answered in a rude tone and opened the door to the room so the two handy thugs, able to quickly shut the girls up and suppress any rebellion, entered the room. Okay, I'm sorry, the dancer replied guiltily, lowering her eyes to the floor. So now I will explain what are the subtleties of your new job. From this day, you will not ask unnecessary questions, become polite and courteous. As to me and the esteemed owner of our nightclub and to their customers, if any of the customers ask you for additional services, you must not refuse them. If you try to run away or cause any other problems to our club or your antics and behavior will affect its reputation, I remind you that we have your documents and we know where your relatives live. Moreover, these guys will be happy to visit them, the administrator summarized, pointing to the two huge bodyguards standing behind him. As soon as the man finished speaking, Carlos and Richard took away the girls' cell phones and all their belongings, leaving the room. You have time to think about voluntarily agreeing to our proposal, or force will be used, Victor added, and left the room, locking the door again. What do we do now? How do we go on living? I don't want to work in this club for another minute. One of the girls said and started crying. So why didn't you tell them right away? Asked the other one. Girls, calm down. We mustn't panic, Barbara intervened in the conversation. Trying to keep her emotions under control, the girl suggested discussing the situation. Having heard the opinion of each of the dancers, Barbara decided that at this stage, it was better to stall for time and then pretend that they agreed to cooperate and see what would happen next. Having said that, the girl does not give up hope that her disappearance will be noticed and help will come before she starts working. 
Meanwhile, Barry, having worked his day's work, heads home. On the way, the guy decides to stop by the supermarket to buy some groceries for home. Standing in line at the checkout, he notices Nancy a few meters away from him, paying for her purchases at the next checkout, and is greatly surprised. Perplexed and wondering what is going on, the guy hurriedly pays for the goods and runs out after the girl. Noticing Nancy nearby, Barry chases after her and grabs her arm. I don't get it. What are you doing here? Barbara told me you were supposed to be in the village. Where is she? The guy asks, demanding an explanation. Oh, Barry, hi. Barbara is waiting for me at the station. I'm in a hurry to get some groceries for my parents, Nancy replied, trying to get out of it. I've seen what you bought, and I doubt your parents will need fruit and vegetables in the village. Why not? They haven't had a good harvest this year. Stop feeding me this or I'll start talking to you differently. This is a very serious situation, so tell me the truth. Barry started pressuring the girl, using the evil cop method. All right, all right, calm down. Nothing really happened, Nancy said, stammering a little, and then starting her story, stammering a little. Hurry up. The guy with the law degree continued to press. Barbara has been working as a dancer at the Cosmos nightclub for a month now. She didn't want to tell you about it because she knew you would react negatively to it. Barbara wanted to help her parents and improve the family's financial situation. Where is she now? I believe she's on her way to the capital. Just yesterday, her dance group was asked to go there to perform at a local nightclub. Don't worry, she'll be back in a couple of days. It's no big deal, Nancy replied, telling the whole truth. The girl had never seen Barry in such a state and mood so she decided that it was better not to hide anything, because working in a nightclub is not as bad as her friend thought, who decided to deceive her boyfriend and parents. Why isn't she answering her phone? Barry asked, pulling out his cell phone and making a few calls to Barbara. The girl's cell phone was unavailable, which only made Barry more anxious. I don't know. Maybe she can't hear me. Don't be so nervous. Everything's going to be fine. Okay, I'm off to the club. Not a word to Barbara's parents. If you blab, I'll come and I'll be even angrier than I am now, the guy said, forbidding to tell the girl's parents about what was happening. Okay, I understand you, guiltily replied Nancy and went to her dormitory. Meanwhile, Barry goes to the nightclub Cosmos to understand what's going on and find out where his girlfriend has disappeared. Hello, are you the receptionist? Barry asks as he meets a distinguished-looking man in the club. Good afternoon, yes. Please escort me to the owner, as I have a very important conversation to have with him. I'm sorry, but you can't go through. He's busy. Victor politely refused. Ignoring the man's words, Barry begins to break into the second floor. Richard, Carlos, come here, the receptionist called out, trying to stop the insolent guy. At that moment, a scuffle breaks out between Barry and the nightclub security guards. At the noise, Jacob comes out of his office and sees what's going on. When Barry looks up, he notices a gray hard man who looks very much like the old man he met at Barbara's house not so long ago. Due to poor lighting and distance, the guy couldn't be sure if it was the same person. Deciding not to escalate the situation and not to aggravate the conflict, Barry calms down and apologizing for his behavior, leaves the nightclub. Back in his car, he decides to wait for the owner to leave the building. A couple hours later, Barry notices a short, gray-haired man in expensive clothes leaving the nightclub. In order not to draw unnecessary attention to himself, and perhaps not to aggravate the situation of the girl, Barry starts the car and drives a couple of meters away from the old man, heading for the parking lot. At that moment, the guy realizes that the club owner and the old man from Barbara's house are the same person. Suddenly, a picture begins to form in Barry's head, and he realizes that the attack on the girl during the meeting with Jacob was not accidental, and that her disappearance is also the work of this old bastard. Realizing that it is necessary to act actively, Barry goes home and decides to immediately talk to his father. The guy heads to his father's office and after knocking, goes in to see him. Hi, I have an important conversation with you, said Barry from the doorstep, meeting his father. Hi, 
Maybe it can wait till tomorrow. I was actually just going to bed. No, just give me a couple minutes. It's really important. Okay, I'm listening, Alexander replied. Do you know anyone in police force? Why do you want to know? Has something happened? I'm afraid so. A little over a month ago, Barbara was attacked outside the dormitory. An old man passing by saved her and appeared to protect her from danger. All this time, he had been gaining the trust of Barbara's parents and, trying to help her with a job, advised her to get a job at the Cosmos nightclub. As it turned out, he was only pretending to be a humble and unhappy grandfather, as he is actually the owner of the place. She disappeared yesterday, and I'm afraid it's all connected. Yeah, it's really suspicious, but I'm not sure anyone's going to help us now. Let's wait until morning, and then we'll sound the alarm. See if Barbara turns up and it's all just a figment of your imagination. No, this has to be dealt with immediately. Take my word for it, I feel she's in trouble and she needs help. I'm the only one who can save her and I'm asking for your help. Barry continued to insist, letting his father know that he needed his support. Okay, I hear you. Help me. I can't do this without you, Barry added, gazing intently into his father's eyes. Noticing that blank and downcast look, the man realized he had to do everything for his son and his girlfriend. Good evening, John. I apologize for calling so late, but I need your help, Barry's father said, getting through to the police lieutenant colonel and his old acquaintance. Hello, Mickey. What's wrong? asked the man, realizing from his voice that his friend wouldn't call at this hour without a good reason. I've got an urgent matter for you. My son's girlfriend is missing, and it's probably for a reason. She worked at the nightclub Cosmos as a dancer, but it turned out that the old man cheated on her and got into the confidence of the girl's family to lure her to his club. Is there anything you can do to help? I'm sure I can because Jacob has been on my radar for a long time and has raised suspicions about his underground activities related to the exploitation of young girls. We've searched his club several times, but we've never been able to catch him in the act. If this case goes through, I'll owe him one. Great. What do we do? Mickey asked, trying to plan the next course of action. We'd have to wait until morning anyway. Have Barry come to my office as early as possible, and I'll try to talk to the chief and get permission to search the nightclub. I'm sure the chief would love the chance to put Jacob behind bars. Okay, thank you very much, Barry's father summarized, and hung up the phone to tell his son to wait until morning. Listening to his father, the boy has a hard time waiting until morning and hardly sleeps as he is constantly nervous and thinking about Barbara having waited until seven in the Barbara. Having waited until seven in the morning, Barry immediately goes to the Utangeliki and meets. Hello, my father Mickey called you yesterday about the disappearance of a girl. Hello, Barry. Yeah, yeah, I remember everything. I have everything ready and my superiors have approved the raid, so let's go. They are waiting for us outside. The lieutenant colonel replied and escorted the guy to the minibius with the rapid response squad. Cops go to the cosmos and put on a mask show when they arrive, putting everyone present down. The search began. Jacob tried to object or stop what was happening, but very quickly found himself horizontal and realized it was best not to argue. The girls who were in the basement heard the noise and screaming going on upstairs. Trying to listen to what is going on, Barbara realizes that this is not a party. Do you hear that? Something's going on up there. Let's make some noise. Maybe they'll hear us, Barbara said, suggesting that the girls stage a light riot to be discovered. The dancers supported Barbara's suggestion, realizing that it was their last hope, because tomorrow they could be taken away to an unknown destination or split up and forced to work with VIP clients. Tearing their voices, the girls began to scream, hoping that someone would hear them and come to their aid. A few minutes later, the door opens and the dancers see the administrator behind whom stand armed policemen in masks. From the surprise, the girls froze and could not neither rejoice at what was happening nor say anything. At that moment, Barry squeezes through the crowd of policemen and runs up to Barbara. How are you? How are you feeling? Did you get hurt? The guy starts asking, looking at the girl. 
Thank you how I've been waiting for you, said Barbara, throwing herself on Barry's neck. Are you all right? Barry asked again. Yes, I'm fine. But these days have been terrible. We've been threatened and told that we would be working as private dancers with rich clients, Barbara replied as she recounted what had happened here. I hope you don't mind going to the police station to testify and tell us all about it, asked Don, who had heard all this and had followed Barry into the basement. We'll tell everything, replied Barbara, answering the lieutenant colonel and looking at the other girls. They were frightened and didn't answer anything, only glancing at the police officers and Barbara. Don't be afraid, you're safe, Stone added, getting the girls to calm down a bit. Yes, we'll confirm everything, replied one of the dancers. As they left the nightclub, Barbara noticed Jacob Jacob lying on the floor next to a policeman with an automatic rifle in his hands. At first she wanted to run away, but realizing that she was in no danger, the girl decided to approach the old man and say a few words to him. I would never have thought that a man of such a venerable age would be able to gain the trust of his parents by pursuing such low goals for easy gain. I hope you get what you deserve. Thank you for watching this video to the end. Subscribe to the channel. Like it, write comments if you like the story. And see you on the channel.